Claude just got a major upgrade and the coders are all over it, but it's not just for coders. Today I want to show you how to use their favorite tool to manage any project. While running my marketing agency, we tackled some seriously complex projects and I really wish we had this back then. I took everything I learned over those 10 years of trial and error and combined that with some programming best practices. Then I distilled all of that down into this simple three-step process. Here's why this matters. Building software is one of the most complex types of projects out there. To keep up, developers need to use powerful tools and methodologies to cut through the chaos. And most people outside of tech have not tapped into this. You may have heard of agile methodology, but I bet you haven't added that to your project management toolkit yet. This is a deep topic, and today I'm going to give you the 80-20 of how to use Claude's fresh upgrade to apply this. In fact, keeping it simple is one of the core agile values. It stresses getting something valuable done over comprehensive documentation. My team and I always loved creating comprehensive documentation when kicking off a new project. It felt good, it felt like we were in control, but guess what? That was a false sense of confidence, because a lot of that documentation would just fly out the window as soon as the client changed their mind, and that happened a lot at the beginning of the project. So here's the fastest and best way to kick off a project that I've found. First, you've got to get all the information about the project into the AI somehow. The simplest and best way I've found to do this is to record your Zoom calls and make sure that it is transcribing those right in Zoom. There's a lot of AI tools that summarize these calls, but I don't really recommend any of those. That's because with the Zoom transcript, you get the speaker's name clearly labeled. You lose that information when you just take an audio file and transcribe it. This is critical for the AI to know who's talking when, and you don't want the uh, AI thinking that you know you are talking when the client's talking. That can create a lot of downstream errors. Since most people are using Zoom anyway, this is a quick and easy way to get that information. This might include transcripts of sales calls with the client or internal handoff meetings where you discuss these projects internally. From here, we're gonna create a shiny new Claude project. Just scroll over here, go to projects, and create project. Happy to be building a website for some friends who run a pottery business, so that's the example we're going to use today. ChatGBT also has projects, so if that's your AI of choice, feel free to use that one. You can find that right here in the left navigation. That ought to work just fine as well. This is almost identical to the Claude project, but in that Claude project, that new large language model, the 3.7, is really doing some amazing work these days. Quick side note, this channel is dedicated to exploring all different types of AI tools. There's no one tool that does it all, but when you chain multiple tools together and understand what each one is good at, that's the best approach to learning AI. Don't fall too deep deeply in love with any one tool. By keeping an open mind, you can really stay on the frontier of this emerging technology. All right, so in this Claude project, the first thing we wanna do is upload that call transcript. And next, I'm gonna jump into the cheat sheet. I create a cheat sheet like this for every single video that I make. It includes everything we're gonna go through today and a whole lot more that we're not gonna have time for. I'm gonna grab this prompt that just says, please take the following transcript and create a smart project goal, breaking that down into milestones, etc." We'll run that, see what happens. Awesome, we've now mapped out our smart project goal with some milestones. You can see down here, we're using this Claude 3.7 Sonnet. You can flip between the normal and the extended if you want it to think a little bit longer We'll get into some use cases for that here in a second. But for now, that's pretty awesome. We've mapped out what success looks like and a quick roadmap for that. But now let's look into what failure might look like. This is a really killer prompt for conducting what is called a pre-mortem. So imagining that the project has failed and figure out why did it fail. So thinking through this at the very beginning can be a really helpful way to set yourself up for success. Copy that right in here. This is probably even more important than understanding what success looks like is figuring out all the ways this could go sideways. Now I'm just asking asking it to please build an artifact from the last two responses. An artifact is basically another word for a file that can be stored or displayed otherwise inside of Anthropic's Claude. And now right down here, you can click this little button to add this to your current project. And we're building out the files inside of your current project. So let's just click that. And now you can see we have this project plan and risk analysis here as a additional file. So in just a couple quick prompts, we've been able to get to work really quickly, uploading that transcript and converting that into uh, a document that outlines what success and what failure might look like. And now that we've got that all loaded up, it's time to get to work. Let's get this thing done. Agile thrives on short iterations or sprints. These are usually one to four weeks long. The next step is to build out a more comprehensive project plan or a WBS work breakdown structure that outlines these different sprints and what everybody's going to be doing. So I'm grabbing this simple prompt here that just says, given the project scope and objectives, generate this WBS. Dropping that right 
right back in here. This might be a good place to use that extended mode so it gives this a little extra thought. Nice, it's automatically building an artifact here, which is really cool. You wanna make sure and give this a good look and make sure that there's no errors in here. This often needs some tweaks before you move on to the next step. Like I said, there's a ton in the cheat sheet, but the next one I wanna jump into here is identifying dependencies or relationships between the tasks. That's gonna be really critical as we move forward. Copying that right in here, paste that in. Awesome, it has ripped through that and updated this with dependencies. So now I'm gonna add this to the project as well, clicking this little add to current project file. Now I wanna show you something really cool. We're gonna make a Gantt chart of this. I'm gonna upload an example CSV of what I want this Gantt chart to be formatted like. That'll be included in the cheat sheet as well. You can just download that. Now I'm just dropping this prompt in that says using the work breakdown structure, create a Gantt chart and make it match the example file. Awesome, we got this here. We're gonna add this to our project by clicking that button and we're gonna download this puppy and we're gonna go to this free tool that's listed here in the cheat sheet free online Gantt. We've gotta change this from TXT to CSV. We're gonna upload that and look at this beautiful Gantt chart that we've created, complete with all of the dependencies, et cetera. This is killer. You can embed this on your website. There are so many ways you can use this. So this will wow your stakeholders with how on top of it you are. They can click in here and see anything they need to see. And we're gonna be able to use AI to update this as changes come along, as they always do. This is where stakeholder communications becomes critical. This is another core value of Agile, keeping the customer in the loop. This might be an internal customer, maybe your boss or other stakeholders, or it could be a client. But I can clearly remember moments where we thought we understood the client's needs and we went forward and did a bunch of work only to have to redo it. So keeping the clients in the loop can really pay off later on. So I'm gonna grab this prompt that just says, using the call transcript in your knowledge base, list all potential stakeholders. Awesome, this has pulled some things in that I wouldn't have even thought of, but these different um, you know, local markets and you know, boutique regional stores that may be helpful to keep in the loop here as we're building this. But I'm gonna ask it to create an artifact so we can easily add that to our knowledge base. And boom, we're just gonna add that to the current project. I'm also gonna copy this one. And I like to create a separate project just for stakeholder communication. I'm gonna call this Pottery Website Comms and I'm gonna copy and paste key stakeholders in here. And now I'm gonna grab these instructions here and load them into the communications project. These instructions just basically outline what we wanna get done with this particular communications project. This is gonna be our hub for any sort of communication that needs to go out to these stakeholders. It's best if we can create an email to each of them that is specifically what they need to know rather than a generic email with too much information. And it'll save us a lot of time where we don't have to craft each one of those, we can let the AI do it. So I'm copying that right in here into the project instructions. I'm also gonna add just some basics about the project plan in here so it knows what's going on. Now I'm just saying, please create a short email introducing each stakeholder to the new project. And just as we've outlined in the instructions, it started with the owner here. It's created a beautiful email to her. Now it's crafting one to her assistant. It's gonna move through each stakeholder just like that, letting each person know exactly what they need to know when they need to know it. This can be a powerful tool for herding all the cats through a successful project. Because these days, no project is easy. There's always hidden complexity. And as David Bowie likes to say, we've got to turn to face the strange changes. There's a book about the Agile methodology called The Agile Samurai that I'd recommend to any and all project managers. It gave me a great phrase for combating scope creep. In there, the author recommends just simply saying, adding something without removing something is just wishful thinking. And I think that resonates, especially if you've clearly communicated the roadmap to your client or to your stakeholder. I know firsthand how painful it can be to get notification of a major change in a project, but as Ray Dalio says, we've got to embrace reality and deal with it. Here's a sequence of prompts that can help you when these major changes arrive. It basically just says, hey, the following problem has come up. Brainstorm as many diverse approaches to this problem as possible. Then you list the problem. You pick the best option. And then you ask it to update the WBS. 
the Gantt chart and create a detailed summary that you can then load into the communications project to let everybody know that you're all over it and here's your plan of attack. Here's another advanced idea that you may want to try if you use a project management software like Monday or Teamwork or Basecamp. You can use Claude to create files that you can upload into new boards or new projects in these different tools. So taking that transcript and in the same way that we created that Gantt chart, asking it to create a board or a project file that you can then upload load into your software that way. But like I said earlier, applying this agile methodology to project management is a very deep topic. The cheat sheet is absolutely packed with all sorts of resources on how to improve upon what I've just gone over. It also includes my notes on the agile samurai, which I think every project manager needs to take a look at. That cheat sheet's over 20 pages and there's over 120 of them immediately accessible to anybody who joins my Patreon. There's a link in the description. Check that out. Out. There's some coaching options in there as well. But now I want to congratulate you. You've made it. You now have this blazing new tool in your project management arsenal because even when things get messy, you now have a clear path forward. And this is just the beginning. The more that you apply this, the more powerful you'll become. So the only question is, how are you going to use it? Drop that in the comments. I sincerely want to know. I have a whole nother video that's all about automating any process with Claude. This is one of my favorite videos, although it's a little bit older. This is your next step in AI mastery. I'll see you over there. Make the dreams come true.